Let me ask you something. If I told you about a city without cars, without roads, and stretching across 170 kilometers of desert in a straight, mirrored line, would you believe it? Can it be a lie or the truth? Watch today's episode to get to know the truth. Chapter 1. The Dream That Shocked the World Believe it or not, that's exactly what Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman promised to the world when he unveiled The Line, part of the ambitious Eniom project. A futuristic city where planes fly you to work, robots deliver your groceries, and everything you need is within a five-minute walk. The original plan was so massive that people across the globe couldn't stop talking about it. A city just 200 meters wide, 800 meters long, and 500 meters tall. Basically two giant walls of skyscrapers stretching deep into the Arabian desert. So what is the purpose behind this? To house 9 million people in this vertical mega city while completely rewriting the rules of urban living. No pollution, no cars, just clean, futuristic living. The hype videos went viral, investors started paying attention, and the world thought we were about to witness the most futuristic city ever attempted. But behind the glossy presentations and giant holograms was a truth that slowly started to leak out. And trust me, it's even crazier than what they originally told us. Chapter 2 the Big Line While the world was busy imagining this futuristic wall of glass cutting through the desert, reports began to surface that the real project wasn't anything close to the full 170-kilometer vision. In fact, insiders revealed that the plan was way smaller, more like 2.4 kilometers instead of 170. That's less than the distance you'd cover in a morning jog. According to an investigation by the Wall Street Journal, NEOM executives knew the original plan was never realistic. But instead of telling the crown prince, they kept feeding him inflated numbers, calling it deliberate manipulation of financials. But the truth was, engineers had only ever been working on a small version around a fancy new marina. So while the world thought a massive desert-spanning megacity was on its way, the actual plan was more like a small strip with luxury views. The revelation shocked many, but it also shifted expectations. The dream city wasn't dead. It was just about to be built in a much different way. And trust me, what they're actually doing might be smaller in length, but it's far more extreme in design. Chapter 3 Phase 1 Building a Mini City So, what's really happening? Neom has kicked off something they call the Minimum Viable City. Think of it as a test version. Instead of the whole desert-spanning wall, they're focusing on a core stretch of 2.4 kilometers, broken into three modules. Modules 45, 46, and 47. And the centerpiece is a giant man-made harbor called the Hidden Marina. It's supposed to be the central base of this first build, but the numbers here are insane. Just to build Module 46, they'll need more concrete than all three Great Pyramids of Giza combined. On top of that, 4.8 million tons of steel will go into just one section. That's not a city block, that's a mega monument. And let's not forget, the entire construction zone is around 50 square kilometers. They're using robotic factories to mass-produce building parts, almost like a car assembly line but for skyscrapers. This isn't just about building fast, it's about creating the most industrialized construction project the world has ever seen. Chapter 4 – Anchor Assets Now, let's talk about what's actually inside. Neom doesn't just want to build a livable city, they want to create global landmarks that turn heads. These are called anchor assets, and honestly, they sound more like theme park attractions than city infrastructure. First, there's the chandelier, an upside-down observation deck that literally hangs over the marina. Cruise ships will pass underneath while people above sip coffee in the sky. Then you have the diamond, a massive holographic sphere that rivals the new sphere in Las Vegas, designed for futuristic shows and entertainment. Next comes Central Park, but with a twist. This one is suspended 300 meters in the air, a floating green oasis inside the mirrored walls. The wildest addition was the Neum Stadium, a 45,000-seat football stadium perched on top of the chandelier, a sports arena literally hanging in the air. They even want this to play a role in Saudi Arabia's 2034 FIFA World Cup bid, and to top it all off, the entire facade of the line will be wrapped in a mirrored video screen so large that it will be visible from Egypt's beaches, 22 kilometers across the Red Sea. This isn't just a city, it's a spectacle, a 500-meter-tall advertisement for the new Arabian dream. 
Chapter 5. Who Pays for All This? So, now you may wonder who's paying for all this? We're talking billions upon billions of dollars. Well, this is where things get even more interesting. For decades, only Saudi citizens could legally own land in the kingdom. Foreigners could live and work there, but not own property. But starting January 2026, that rule changes completely. A new property law will allow foreigners, especially the wealthy and investors, to buy property in places like Riyadh, Jeddah, and most importantly, every single part of Niam. Yes, that includes the line. So, if you have deep enough pockets, you could literally own a slice of the world's strangest mega project. This isn't just about Saudi money anymore. It's about pulling in global capital to help fund the dream. By opening the doors to foreign ownership, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is basically saying, you want in on the future, pay up. Chapter 6. A Vertical Manhattan Now, let's get into how this place is supposed to function. The line's biggest promise is no cars, no roads, no pollution. But instead of spreading the city horizontally, they've decided to fold everything vertically. Dennis Hickey, Neom's chief development officer, explained it as a vertical Manhattan. So how does that work? It's working like this. Instead of normal city streets, you have five giant decks stacked on top of each other at heights of 30 meters, 150 meters, 250 meters, 350 meters, and 450 meters. Each deck is basically its own boulevard, complete with shops, homes, parks, and transport. On top of that, each deck has three layers. The pedestrian layer, a mobility layer with light rail, and a service layer for robots and utilities. It's like a city inside a city, stacked five times over. The goal is to make everything reachable within a five-minute walk. Sounds great on paper, but the details get a little complicated. Let me walk you through how something as simple as delivering a package would work here. Chapter 7. The Crazy Transport System So, say you ordered a package online. First, it arrives at the line's port. From there, it goes onto a freight train that delivers it to the central terminal. Then, it's loaded into an autonomous pod that moves through the underground service layer. From there, it goes up a massive vertical core in a high-speed freight elevator. Once it reaches the right deck, it transfers again into another smaller system. And finally, a little delivery robot brings it to your door. Sound smooth? Well, maybe in theory. In practice, it's one of the most complicated logistics systems ever designed. But here's where it gets even more ironic. For all the talk about no cars, at the very top of the building, 500 meters above ground, there's a highway for private cars. And not just any cars. We're talking supercars for the elite residents living in penthouses. So while the regular folks take the shared trains and elevators, billionaires get their Bugattis delivered straight to their sky garage. Different rules depending on how deep your wallet is. Chapter 8. Flying Cars and Sea Gliders If you thought that was complicated, wait until you hear about the air travel plans. Reports show that work on the underground high-speed rail has stalled, with tunnels left half-covered. So instead, NEOM is looking to the skies. They're investing in futuristic transport like flying taxis and electric sea gliders. One company, Regent Craft, is building electric gliders that skim just above the water at speeds of 300 kilometers per hour. These gliders would connect NEOM to nearby cities like Hergada in 30 minutes and Aqaba in 50. On top of that, Neom is putting big money into VTOL aircraft, vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. So instead of rushing underground to catch a train, you might one day call a flying taxi from your balcony. Sounds wild, but this might actually solve the ground-level chaos their system is bound to face. Chapter 9. The Gamble of a Lifetime So where does all of this leave us? The line isn't a lie, but it's not what they first promised either. Instead of a 170-kilometer glass wall city, we're looking at a 2.4-kilometer mega section with floating parks, holographic spheres, and stadiums in the sky. The money will come not just from Saudi Arabia, but from foreign investors buying up pieces of land starting in 2026. The transport system will mix vertical trains with flying cars, while the rich enjoy highways in the clouds. It's risky, no doubt. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is betting his reputation, his country's wealth, 
and even Saudi Arabia's global image on this project. If it works, he'll be remembered as a visionary who built something no one thought possible. If it fails, the line could end up like the abandoned King Abdullah economic city, a ghost town in the desert, a billion dollar reminder of what happens when ambition collides with reality. So that's the wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, hit like, comment, share it around, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives like this.